This video introduces our series about color blindness. We will review basics of color vision and the genetics needed to understand color deficiency and its inheritance. Color blindness is surprisingly common, occurring in about 1 in 8 men, but only 1 in 50 women. Most don't even know they have it unless they are tested. It can affect day-to-day -day functioning to various degrees, and sometimes even career choice. Let us begin our story with two scientists from history. First, Isaac Newton and one of his famous experiments. Newton took a prism and showed that sunlight, which appears white, actually contains a rainbow of colors. Using the same simple setup he used, I got this photo, just as Newton described his result. This is the spectrum of colors as most of us see them. John Dalton was a scientist who worked in the 1800s, famous for the development of basic atomic theory. He is also one of the most famous examples of color deficiency. Here is a more formal look at the color spectrum. Dalton, looking at the same spectrum of colors, described what he saw. Quote, I found that persons in general distinguish six kinds of color in the solar image, namely red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. To many, it is quite otherwise. I see only two, or at most three, distinctions. These I should call yellow and blue, or yellow, blue, and purple. My yellow comprehends the red, orange, yellow, and green of others, and my blue and purple coincides with theirs. End quote. With that description, a non-colorblind person can get a pretty good idea of what the world looks like to someone with his kind of colorblindness. As a scientist, Dalton was curious. What was different about his eye? He guessed it was because the fluids inside his eye were tinted blue. He, of course, would never know the answer, but we do. He was curious enough that he directed that his eye be examined after his death, which was in 1844. The examiner, a Joseph Ransom, opened one eye, removed the internal fluids, and placed them in a shallow glass dish. In looking through them, he found them to be perfectly clear, not blue. Then he took the second eye and removed a section from the back so he could look through the front of the eye. He found no color distortion. His conclusion was the color deficiency was not due to a problem in the lens or fluids of the eye. But that is not the end of this story. Enough of his eye tissue was preserved so that in 1995, when the technology was available, gene testing was done. It showed that the green or M cone pigment was absent. That put Dalton in the category of red-green color blindness. Technically, he was a deuteranope. We will explain the term later on. This was such a famous example that color blindness often went by the name Daltonism. As humans, the rich level of color vision that most of us enjoy is based on having three color cones, resulting in what is called trichromatic color vision. We also have rods for vision in low light, but they don't contribute to color vision. A more accurate way to look at the cones is by the part of the spectrum that each is most sensitive to. The naming convention works like this. On the short wavelength end are the blue or S cones. This is the peak of rod sensitivity, but again they don't contribute to color. In the middle are the green or M cones, and at longer wavelengths are the red or L cones. That is the full complement of cones that gives us our color vision. Things, of course, can go wrong, and color vision may be less than normal. Here is the basic plan for color deficiency, which generally occurs in one of two levels. I say generally because there are more versions, but these are the common ones and are the most important ones to understand. The simplest type is when one or more cone classes is missing. The other type can be described as resulting from a hybrid cone. Let's take a look at these one at a time. For the first type, missing one cone class, means that you have only two cones with which to tell colors apart. 
That makes you a dichromat. If the green cones are missing, as we saw with Mr. Dalton, in humans this results in a deficit in red-green color vision. You might find it interesting to know that, for most mammals, this is their standard level of color vision. The second type of color deficiency is a bit more complicated. When I was learning this, some years ago, we were taught that all the cone classes were present, but one of the cone pigments was not functioning properly, so perception of that particular color was just weak. That's represented by the desaturated pale green cone here. A good deal of research starting in the 1980s revealed a more complex explanation. It turns out not to be exactly a functionally deficient pigment, but rather a hybrid or chimeric red or green pigment. To understand that, we're going to have to learn something about chromosomes and genes. Here are all 23 pairs of human chromosomes. Displayed in this way, this is called a karyotype. Chromosomes come in pairs. For each specific chromosome number, you get one from your father and one from your mother. There are 22 pairs of autosomes and one pair of sex chromosomes, the X and Y. If someone has one X and one Y, they are male. With two X's, they are female. The gene for the short wavelength or blue pigment is located on chromosome 7. The gene for the long wavelength or red pigment is on the X chromosome. The X chromosome is also the location of the gene for the middle wavelength green pigment. Looking closer at the X chromosome, the L and the M genes are actually located at the end of the long arm right next to one another, which turns out to have two important consequences. Consequence 1. Since they are both on the X chromosome, inheritance is what we call X-linked. Consequence 2. Because they are next to one another on the same chromosome, they do a surprising thing. They can exchange parts, a genetic event called recombination. We shall explain. When a gene is carried on the X chromosome, we describe its inheritance as X-linked. Consider a mother with one X chromosome carrying a normal gene and one with an abnormal gene. We will give the father, in this case, a normal X chromosome. This square shows how the genes become distributed to their children. Offspring in the first column are normal. Looking at the second column, for a female with two X chromosomes, if they have one normal and one abnormal gene, usually they have normal function but they are a carrier of the abnormal gene. Males have only one X chromosome. Whatever genes they get on the X chromosome are all they have. If they inherit a normal gene, they have normal function. If they inherit an abnormal gene, they have no way to counteract that. There are two other patterns of inheritance depending on the parents. This box shows an affected father who makes both his daughters carriers, for a female to be affected, she has to have the defective gene on both X chromosomes, which requires at least a carrier mother and an affected father. Since the red and green genes are both located on the X chromosome, they are subject to X-linked inheritance. In other words, this is the way red-green color blindness is inherited. Consequence 2 relates to the L and M genes being next to each other on the X chromosome. The chromosomes and the genes they carry are passed from parent to child by cell division, which can happen in one of two ways. One kind involves growth, the other kind relates to reproduction. This is the kind we are currently talking about. For those with a background in biology, you will recognize I have shortened this process to explain the concept. In the process of cell division, chromosomes gather in the center of the cell with like chromosomes pairing up. As the single parent cell splits into two daughter cells, the chromosomes are supposed to be divided up equally. It may surprise you to learn that frequently the duplication and distribution of genes is not as neat as, say, dealing cards. An example will help make this clear. Here we are showing one maternal and one paternal chromosome 
align together at cell division. I am showing two genes on each chromosome coded by letter and color. A single gene may come in different forms, which are called alleles. I am showing gene 1 with alleles A and B, and gene 2 with alleles M and N. Each allele is a different form of the same gene that could code for different blood types or different opsin pigments. At this point in cell division, the chromosomes do a totally surprising thing. They may exchange segments. This is called crossing over and results in the recombining of the genes. Each daughter cell then gets one of these chromosomes, but with a different combination of genes compared to the parent. In the big picture, recombination is an engine for diversity upon which natural selection can act. Crossing over can also result in uneven exchange of chromosome parts. We discussed this in the video on primate color vision, but we won't want to mention it here again because it has a significant result. Taking a closer look at the X chromosome, on the human X chromosome there are often more than one copy of each pigment gene. The expected complement would be one green and one red, which occurs in 25% of humans. 50% have one red and two green, and the remaining 25% have four or more genes. How about that? That is covered in more detail in the video on mechanism. Here is a preview of where we are going. I will repeat the last example using a different diagram. The arrows represent the genes for the red and green pigments in the order they sit next to each other on the X chromosome as we discussed. Because of unequal crossing over, there are often multiple copies of the green pigment gene. Even though there may be multiple copies of the green gene, usually only the red and the first green gene are expressed. Remember that it is important. Case 1, the simple case. A recombination event occurs that results in a green gene being shifted from one chromosome to the other. If a male offspring gets only the red gene, then he is a deuteranope, like Mr. Dalton. If he gets the combination of red plus the extra green, then color vision is normal. Case 2 involves recombination with splitting of the genes. That results in a hybrid red-green gene going to each daughter cell. The final color behavior of the hybrid gene depends on where the gene was split. That is where all this gets quite interesting. Now you have sufficient background to appreciate and understand the next video on the mechanism of color deficiency. Here is how the series is organized. In this video we covered background material, including location of the color genes on different chromosomes, X-linked inheritance, and recombination of genes. In the second video, we build on that information to show in more detail the mechanism of how inherited color deficiency happens. In the third video, we use what we know from color science to understand the result of color deficiency in a more technical way. In the last video, we take a descriptive approach, simulating what the world looks like with different levels of color deficiency. Here are more references if you are interested in reading further.